I have never done parole successfully. You know, matter of fact, I've never even really pro reported to parole that many times, you know, complete. But you see, like here, I've been reporting, I've been doing what I had to do, you know, because I feel so, so good now. You know, you make, this program is like, makes people like want to succeed. Tisha Wallace is a parolee at the Harlem Reentry Court, an innovative program of the New York City-based Center for Court Innovation. Ms. Wallace is doing very well. Tisha's story is similar to so many ex-convicts in New York and elsewhere in the country. I was using drugs and I started selling drugs. So I got arrested in 2004 for possession and a sale. I went upstate. Upstate means jail. After a six-month sentence in a labor camp, Tisha was paroled. But she never reported to her parole officer, so she went back to jail. Paroled again, she violated parole and got 20 more months jail time. She currently resides in a family shelter and is Then she got assigned to the Harlem Reentry Court. Well, everything I see about how you're doing is that you've just kept on moving well. You've been in a regular parole office, you don't have to report to a judge. There's no judge to report to. You report to your parole officer and you leave. Here they report to myself. And then uh, for the first two months of the program, they see a judge every two weeks and report their progress to the judge. And one of the great things about that is that they you know, it, it creates a little anxiety when they're not doing well to have to report this to the judge. So I think that that alone motivates people to do a better job so that they don't have bad news to tell the judge when they see the judge. Right here in East Harlem, uh, one in 20 men uh, in a, in a one-mile corridor that this justice center sits in have been to prison. It's a staggering number of, of people cycling in and out of the prison system. And so if you think about the implications for this community, where half the kids right around this justice center live in poverty, um, we have a real opportunity on each guy to make a difference, not just for him, but, but for his family. Philosophy behind the reentry court is problem-solving justice, what we at the Center for Court Innovation call problem-solving justice. Uh, the idea being that you know, folks on parole or, or lit any litigant coming into a court uh, shouldn't just be treated as a, a case, a legal case, but that it's a person um, and that the person's problems and issues, uh, not just the legal situation, need to be addressed as part of the court uh, process. And so there's a real focus on outcomes, not just how fast you process a case, uh, but also what happens to the person. You really get to focus on each person and spend time with each person, see what their individualized needs are, make phone calls, um, talk to their family members, and really try to come up with a plan that will help them be successful. We've had, we've had a lot of success. We've had success with people who have had horrendous criminal records, who have been in gosh, jail 20 years, 25 years. Like, before when I was on parole, like, I didn't know what to do, didn't have a job couldn't get this, couldn't get that, and couldn't get no help to do any of those things. So it was like, it was a dead end. The only thing that, like, I can do is like, just go back to the streets. But here, it's like, you got so much help, it's like no reason for you to fail. Like, no reason to go back to the streets when everybody's trying to help you. The Harlem Reentry Court opened in 2000. It is one of more than a dozen successful demonstration projects launched by the Center for Court Innovation a private, public partnership and think tank for the New York State court system. Its executive director is Greg Berman. The Center for Court Innovation is in the business of court reform, trying to change our justice system. Our model is to actually try to change government from within by working in close partnership with government. And in particular, unlike lots of other think tanks that, uh, that occupy this space, what we're trying to do is go out and test our ideas in the real world. And we do that primarily by creating demonstration projects that try to show new ideas in action. You must do one day of community service. If you fail to do that, you'll be sentenced to 15 days in jail. The center grew out of an experiment, the Midtown Community Court, created to transform the area around Times Square. And you have to go back to the early 90s was a time when New York was viewed by many as an ungovernable city, that crime and disorder were out of control. And what the Midtown Community Court tried to do was focus in like a laser beam 
on low-level crime and disorder, shoplifting, low-level drug sales, prostitution. And this was a neighborhood-based court that sentenced low-level offenders to perform very visible community restitution out in the neighborhoods, paying back the communities that they had harmed through their criminal behavior. And at the same time, what the Midtown Community Court tried to do was combine punishment and help, linking people not only to punishment, but also to the kind of services, be it drug treatment, job training, mental health counseling, that might, with a little bit of luck, stop them from coming back again and again as criminal recidivists. There you go. It was the old Susan. This is the real Susan. The fact that you're getting your daughter back in your life. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Mom. Thank you again. You're welcome. The same people come into our courts again and again and again with the same problem, and no one solves their problem. The court handles the case, usually, often, sends those people back out onto the street three, four, five times until finally they do something really bad and then we wind up throwing away the key and that's uh, the solution that the person is incarcerated for a lengthy period of time and society pays for that and uh, uh, the person still has the problem. We want to guide you to see how we can help you, how we can make your life better, but you have to do it. We can't do it for you. The Mid-Manhattan Community Court pioneered a new idea. Instead of jail, sentence offenders to cleaning up streets and local parks, fixing broken windows and painting over graffiti. Since then, the Center for Court Innovation has established model projects across New York City that have shown that it is possible to change the behavior of offenders. One success is the Red Hook Community Justice Center in a Brooklyn neighborhood that was known for its high level of crime. And we've created a neighborhood-based court there that has succeeded in reducing crime locally and significantly changing the attitudes of local residents, most of whom are members of minority groups, most of whom live in public housing, dramatically improving not only their public confidence and justice, but um, improving their uh, sense of safety in their neighborhood. We needed to do something to improve safety in Red Hook. So when we heard of the Justice Center, we said, great. I want you to do with conditions of release, job readiness, the life choices group, and the marijuana group. Whereas downtown I only have jail or out, here I have a number of different tools to use to get to that person's problem so that they don't come back in front of me again. In the 1990s, Red Hook was one of the most crack-infested neighborhoods in the country. Today, a new IKEA has opened in the area, and the local police precinct has been rated the safest precinct in Brooklyn. Despite such success, the center has been criticized for only dealing with a small part of New York State's court system, a system that handles four million cases a year. So in 2005, the center launched Bronx Community Solutions. What Bronx Community Solutions is, it's an effort to actually go to scale with the problem-solving brand of justice. And in, in the Bronx, we're working uh, in a borough of 1.5 million people. Instead of working in just one neighborhood or with just one judge, we're working with four dozen judges. And again, what we're trying to do is change sentencing practice. We're trying to drastically reduce the use of jail as a response to low-level crime, but also reduce the number of cases in which people walk out of court with no sanction whatsoever for their criminal behavior. Definitely very important that you do show up. Because if you don't show up, a warrant will be placed out. We'll put a note in the system to show that you can be okay? Before Bronx Community Solutions came on the scene, 25% of misdemeanor cases were receiving short-term jail sentences. That number is now down to 4%. Is anybody in here ever going to be without problems in their life? No. If you don't believe you can change, you're going to stay paralyzed and stuck, right? We're sentencing offenders to go out into the neighborhoods and perform very visible community service, painting over graffiti, sweeping the streets, keeping local parks clean. And all of a sudden, the people in the Bronx, justice is no longer this remote abstraction. Justice is something that they can see and feel and touch on a regular basis. And that wins us enormous praise out in, out in the neighborhoods. I'm a Bronx resident. And to tell you the truth, if they can turn some of the people around who are committing the crimes in the Bronx, it's better for me and my family. I have turned my life around ever since the crime I committed um, happened. 
once a radical idea. Problem-solving justice is being adopted by court systems around the country. There are now some 2,500 such courts in the United States. It's changed the face of justice, certainly of the New York court system, and in many ways around the country. Uh, the center has been uh, uh, replicated in other states, this again, it's a new way of approaching what we do. So I give it the highest grades because it, it's, it's a total uh, 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 sea change in terms of how the courts of the state of New York uh, do our, our role, our constitutional role.